it's interesting how uh, diverse India is from a linguistic perspective. Um, sometimes people uh, don't recognize that uh, within India we have 22 constitutionally recognized languages. Many of them have their own unique scripts. Uh, though this is what is officially there, there is a lot of variation on the ground. Uh, the dialects vary from one region to another region within the same state. Uh, so yes, language is extremely rich and diverse. But secondly, also more importantly, uh, the way language is used in India is very interesting. We often mix Indian languages with English. We sometimes even speak between Indian languages. Uh, voice is very, very big in India. People use WhatsApp a lot and WhatsApp uh, voice notes, uh, it, it, the highest density is in India. So language usage, uh, which is of course a cultural uh, phenomenon, needs to be intersected with what people are doing. And therefore there is value in building in India and for India that actually maps these LLMs for the language uh, necessities of the country. Um, and I must also mention here that uh, when you talk about India 2 and India 3, when you go to tier 2, tier 3 towns, their needs of Gen AI as we march towards as a humanity towards AGI uh, may be very different and needs to be looked locally and solved for. Interesting, Pratish. So let's uh, move on to how Saravam M, which is uh, your generative AI language model, is addressing uh, those challenges and uh, opportunities. It was released this month, I believe, 24 billion parameter, trained to reason across 10 Indian languages while tackling maths and coding tasks. So is this a foundational model and how far will this take uh, the sovereign AI ambitions under uh, the government's India AI mission? Uh, so in India, we have this India AI mission that you've already referenced. Uh, and as part of that, Sarva AI has been tasked to build sovereign models from scratch. Uh, that effort is yet to begin. Uh, just for clarification, Sarva M was an internal effort at Sarva. Uh, and the intention was to show that we could do what is called alignment of the models uh, to align them for both Indian language skills and uh, reasoning, coding, and math skills. In fact, we compare the model with many other models of its size, whether it is the Gemma models from Google, whether it is the Lama models from Meta, and we showed that across Indian language skills and the ability to do reasoning and coding, uh, there is a large gap that we're able to create. Uh, and in fact, we've been very open about it. The model is available as open weights on Hacking Face, seen a lot of downloads been trending in the, uh, in the front page, but also written a very extensive technical blog allowing others to use the similar scientific techniques to, uh, to build models as well. Yes. Uh, we feel that it can uh, address many challenges that we're looking at, whether it is content accessibility, whether it is the dialects aspect, whether it is a model that has uh, that is biased towards Indian points of view. So that, that is how yes. we expect you to look at it. Interesting. Prashish, uh, Sarva Mem has generated a mixed response, though. It's been acclaimed and it's been criticised. So let's address this issue, if we could, of originality. Some say instead of building a true model, uh, what you've done is simply fine-tuned an existing one. What's new here? That is right. As I said, uh, uh, the sovereign model build-out is yet to begin. Uh, we have been assigned that particular contract. But as we ready ourselves for it, we want to be able to have the recipe as it is called for post-training. It's a very important part of the uh, process. In fact, we've been very transparent about what it is. We built on top of the Mistral model, which is uh, the, uh, the, the company out of France. And then we show how to take that model and improve its Indian language skills while also improving generic reasoning and coding skills using a combination of algorithmic advances. In fact, we've also shown how to make it very fast and very efficient. Uh, we also released, in fact, the model was released two weeks back and we released an update last week where with additional what is called grounding, we are able to make the model more factual than even an OpenAI O3 model, which is much more expensive. So our intent has been to do it in open, and there's absolutely full transparency that this is here, the post-training recipe, and when we do the uh, sovereign model, we will train from scratch. But the ability to push Indian language skills while ensuring that Coding. In fact, what one interesting tidbit is, uh, JEE is the uh, entrance exam, uh, which is very famous in India. And this year's math Hindi uh, exam, uh, the model was able to do all seven out of seven questions, right? So we have actually even the intersectionality of language and reasoning and math is something we have focused a lot on. And I think that the improvements are quite significant. Uh, and we've gotten very good response on the technical uh, content that we have created.
Interesting. And can you give us a bit more colour, uh, Pratish, in terms of the response uh, from a downloads uh, standpoint of Saravam M? And what's that telling you about uh, adoption? You touched on uh, education, one vertical, and real world demand. Just provide us, if you can, some India specific uh, use cases. Yes, yeah, so uh, I think there were, uh, as is usual in social media, there was some discussion in the, the very early 12, 13 hours after the after the model was released. But actually, the model is trended in the homepage of Hugging Face, which is the primary place where people go to look for open models for quite a while now. It has over 200,000 downloads. Um, mm. the, I think the use cases that we are seeing, there is one developer who has built a, a nurse chatbot there's another developer who has built uh, a mechanism to uh, translate websites. There's another developer who has built a coding assistant in Hindi. Um, so I think the ability for us to look at Indian languages in conjunction with um, uh, code, math, reasoning, knowledge uh, base, in fact, web search, we are going to release more features with respect to web search and deep research. I think doing that uh, together uh, leads to many, many opportunities. In fact, one opportunity that I would, I would like to mention is uh, we are able to put, because the model is small and very efficient, a lot of work has been yes. done to optimize. Uh, it's usable in real-time calls. And in fact, uh, we just recently uh, reached out to over 4 million, uh, no, 40 million Indians, 4 crore Indians, uh, through a platform that we have built in a matter of 10 days uh, by calling and WhatsApp. Uh, and that is the scale that India provides for generative AI uh, there is an enormous user base which is digitally ready, uh, which has connectivity with also 4G uh, and is in need for better digital services. So I think India is going to be a huge market for generative AI uh, and we are yes. building the models for. And Prashish, how confident are you that you can make, ultimately make uh, AI models and the applications affordable? and accessible, especially for those uh, communities in uh, rural India? Yes, uh, my perspective is that uh, this technology is going to be very, very affordable. Uh, I think the, uh, the economics of it is probably not very uh, well understood. Even if I were to give a student, uh, let us say in primary education in India, uh, a chat board to, to use throughout the day, uh, it will probably incur a few rupees of um, of compute, right? Maybe in, at the most about tens of rupees. So when I think about what we give to citizens, whether commercially or through uh, public sector engagement, I think generative AI is going to rank very high in terms of return on investment or, or just value creation for, for the citizen. So I'm very bullish that whether it is education, whether it is healthcare, whether it is financial services, uh, these things will be available close to free and very affordable throughout the sectors. What is more important uh, is that they are built for the people that they need to yes. address. Accessibility is more important. I think affordability is already there and will get much, much better as compute and models become more efficient. Thank you for that, Pratyush. If the longer-term goal is to reduce India's reliance on foreign-made language models, then how soon could India reach that point, that inflection point of AI independence? And when could we see a truly Indian AI model? No, firstly, I, I don't. I don't profess independence. I think consumers should have all the options that they need, right? I, I don't think India posters to become protectionist about this. Uh, uh, we should have alternatives in India, and, and they should fight it out in the market. Uh, we are building models. Uh, we, as soon as we uh, get the compute as part of the India emission, we'll get on to work, and we are hoping to release our models this very calendar year, which are built from scratch on data sets and uh, and, and methods that we create. Uh, so that you can. Continue. I think it's going to be a combination of the ability to build these foundation models and also show unique use cases that really matter for almost one and a half billion people. So we're going to focus on both those. We are a model building company, but we are also building the applications uh, that people would eventually use. Looking beyond India, uh, Pratyush, uh, uh, when you look at the broader uh, narrative globally, do you feel China is going to perhaps eclipse India in the AI race and do the developments surrounding DeepSeek serve to underline how 
India perhaps is behind the curve or are you confident that India is at an inflection point and achieving a breakthrough of its own? No, def definitely the, the efforts in China are ahead in terms of the number of organizations building and the amount of investment they've already put into it. Uh, and it's on the back of China building uh, consumer grade large companies in house over the last decade. So it, it, it's, it's, it's in some sense a uh, uh, momentum that's been continuing. Uh, I think India would uh, India would probably take a different and a middle path to it. Uh, we have not had, as I said, never wanted to become uh, um, to profess uh, independence or or com complete decoupling. Uh, that will slow things down, but it'll happen. I think we have the talent, we have the we have the investment, uh, we have the intent, we have the pride to do it. So I think India would do it. Um, and what would probably you will see different in India is the ability to bring this to population scale in a manner. That that uh, is, is a utility uh, for every citizen. Uh, I'm deeply inspired by the ability to make this accessible to everybody. Uh, they should have all every other model available as well and the models that we have in India. Uh, notice also that there will be strategic use cases of these models uh, and there is need to be able to build these models, refine them uh, given the, the complex geopolitical world that we are in uh, for those strategic use cases.